aside. The only alternative, smuggling them ashore, running the gauntlet of the fisheries protection fleet. It's called Blackfish. Here, in a quiet corner of Fraserburgh Harbour at dead of night, we secretly filmed this boat unloading. Boxes of fish swung hurriedly into a lorry, dodging quota checks, risking a £50,000 fine. The owner of the lorry confirmed to us this was Blackfish. Fish landed legally is sold in the markets, but with quotas running out, there's not much on offer. A fish famine drives up prices and threatens jobs. Jobs in processing factories like this one. Some of these are Blackfish. The company which is not committing any offence says it has to buy Blackfish if it's to keep its workers busy. And the chippies can't find enough fish to fry, even this one in Aberdeen, officially named Best in Britain. It's much worse for shops across the rest of the country. I think we're facing a very difficult situation here, certainly over the next few months, and I think a lot of fish restaurants in Britain will have severe problems getting supplies. Supplies are now shipped in by the Russians, newcomers to world markets, but quick to spot an opening. In Aberdeen, they're unloading boxes of frozen haddock caught in the Barents Sea. The captain, now the capitalist, right down to the leather briefcase, is selling his frozen fish to a retail buyer who can't get enough fresh from market. All that may seem odd, but government marine scientists say, without any controls, there'd eventually be no fish left in the North Sea. They say there is a danger of overfishing, and that's why the quotas are so tough. The quota was used up by about September this year, and then the fisheries was closed. And that was an essential conservation measure, which should certainly help to ensure that there are, that, that there are more fish around which will contribute to these expected increased catches next year. But if conservation means dumping dead fish, it leaves skippers exasperated and angry. If you play it by the rules, this fish has got to go over the side, which is ridiculous, and this one you keep. The Liberty is back in port. She won't go out fishing again this year. Tonight, her crew are on the dole. The future of thousands like them hangs in the balance as Europe's fisheries ministers decide soon what the quotas will be next year and how much British fish will reach the ports and the dinner plates. QPIM News at 10, Peter Head. We asked the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries and Food for a reaction. They said they have tried to negotiate an increase in quotas with other countries, but without success. They added that quotas were important to save stocks and fishermen's jobs. And that's our focus on Britain for tonight. Soccer and Rangers, the Scottish Cup holders, have been handed a tricky tie away at Premier Division rivals Motherwell in today's third round draw. Giant killing opportunities were given to Clyde or Brecon, who host Celtic, and to non-league Huntley, who visit Hearts, if they beat Queen of the South. Tonight's English Premier League Merseyside derby saw Peter Beardsley score a dramatic winning goal five minutes from time as Everton beat Liverpool by two goals to one. And finally, President Bush hadn't had a lot to laugh about recently, but tonight he did, courtesy of a man who makes a living pretending to be George Bush. Dana Carvey was the star turn at the White House Christmas party and he quickly rounded on the president's mannerisms on the campaign trail. Yeah, the first one I noticed was sort of the hitchhiker, this one. Those people down over there doing that. And then there's two six guns up here doing that thing. Then the wandering index, that fella down there. I must say. That's News at 10 tonight. I'll be here again tomorrow. I hope you'll join me then. Good night. Good evening. Well, there's some signs of some quieter weather coming along, but it's a desperately slow process. Here's the low pressure in the North Sea that's brought all the rain yesterday. So this little ridge we're looking for to come in and just gradually, very slowly, quieten things down. So through the night tonight, we still do have the same problems as we've had today. Eastern parts of Scotland and central and eastern parts of England, rather cloudy, some patchy rain here and there. 
There's clearer weather out to the west and very generally, slowly that'll work its way into much of Scotland. And that will allow temperatures to fall towards freezing, icy patches on the roads and a further hazard with patches of mist and fog here and there by tomorrow morning. And that will tend to go fairly readily tomorrow, although they may just linger on in southern Scotland through much of the morning. But generally speaking, Wales and western parts dry, bright, just the odd light shower, especially near the coast. And more central and eastern parts of England, rather cloudy, still some patchy rain, and very slowly through the day, you will find that the rain will begin to peter out, and the cloud will thin to allow perhaps a glimpse of the sun. Temperatures tomorrow, well at best around 6 or 7 degrees Celsius, that's the mid-40s Fahrenheit, but with a fairly brisk wind, especially in the southwest, it's likely to feel rather on the chilly side. That's it from me. A very good night to you. Tonight, a mother finds her daughter and boyfriend dead in bed. Kent police stage their biggest ever drugs raids. And hanging out with the bungee jumping lemmings from Essex. Good evening. A freak gas accident is being blamed for the deaths of a young couple in Sussex. Natalie Gray reports. Paul Hurring was a brilliant young golfer. He's seen here winning the Sussex Amateur Championships of 1989 shortly before turning professional. Tragically, his career was cut short yesterday when he and his girlfriend, 21-year-old Charlotte Turtle, were found dead in bed by Charlotte's mother when she went to take them a cup of tea. Charlotte and her mother only moved to this cottage in Horsham a week ago. Post-mortems have revealed the couple died after being overcome by poisonous carbon monoxide fumes. Police say they are looking at a gas boiler with gas board and health and safety officials. Meanwhile, at Cottesmore Country Club at nearby Colgate, where 23-year-old Paul worked as a touring professional, flags were at half-mast in respect. He'd been playing here since he was 10 years old and everyone knew and liked him. Uh, he had intelligence and the perseverance to practice and play well. And it was really only going to be a matter of time before he would be a success on the, on the senior circuit. British Gas have so far refused to comment on the incident. More investigations into the tragedy are expected to be carried out at the house tomorrow. Kent Police have put on show £22,000 worth of drugs seized during the biggest raids in the force's history. Hugh Kirby reports. This is just a quarter of the drugs seized during Operation Thrust. The haul included amphetamines, cocaine, crack, heroin, LSD, cannabis and drug-taking equipment. More than 200 officers took part in the two-day operation. More than £22,000 worth of stolen goods were also recovered. The reason I'm not surprised is that if people are involved in the drug scene, they're often involved in a broader criminal scene. Uh, it may be petty thefts, it may be burglaries, it may be stolen vehicles. CS gas and sophisticated scanning equipment capable of monitoring police frequencies was also recovered. 80 people were arrested. We seek to target dealing at the top end by the big operations with customs and excise, but we seek also to pick it up at the bottom end with people who are dealing at street level. The next raid is already being planned. Hugh Kirby, TVS News. But the police operation wasn't faultless. In a raid at Margate, they stormed into the wrong flat. Una Hawkins was babysitting for her grandchildren when she heard a group of men running up the stairs. Minutes later, they burst in through the front door. The police have apologised for their mistake and ordered repairs to the flat, but the family say the apology has come too late. Residents in a block of flats at Seaford in Sussex have been told they've each got to spend up to £20,000 on repairs to their homes. Malcolm Stewart reports. D-Day veteran Bill Blackman moved into Pelham Court near the centre of Seaford when his wife had to go into a nursing home. Eva Simpson, a 90-year-old widow, is the oldest resident. Both face devastating bills to make their homes safe. I've got a £100 um, surplus in, this, in the bank, and that's it. That, that's to cover me maintenance for this quarter that's coming up. So what are you going to do? Well, nothing I can do, is it? The back of Pelham Court shows the problem. It's collapsing. The balconies are unsafe. The entire back wall will have to be removed. 
The local builder who put up the flats in 1961 used fast drying concrete called high alumina for the supporting beams. It was incorrectly mixed. The builder is dead and the managing agent for the block admits the 16 flat owners are faced with a disaster with estimated repair costs of between 10 and 19,000 pounds. We have got to sit down and work out with them and help them as much as possible to find a solution to the problem. Half of the residents are elderly people, the others are first-time buyers. High alumina cement was widely used by builders in the early 1960s. Thousands of other people in the south could find that they too have the same problems as the residents of Pelham Court. More than 60 people have been arrested in Sussex in two multi-million pound mortgage fraud inquiries. One is being carried out by the regional crime squad, which is looking into the affairs of several solicitors. A number of estate agents and conveyancing clerks have also been questioned. The bungee jumping craze has reached Essex. David Sorday went along to Basildon to see members of the Lemmings Club in action. They call themselves the Lemmings and the reason's obvious. Bungee jumping in Basildon is now all the rage, and the lemmings are the local bungee jumping club. There aren't any ravines in Essex, so they do it from a crane, 150 feet above water. And there's no shortage of volunteers. You've got to have a go. Whether you live to tell the tale is a different matter or not, isn't it? But you've got to try. The organisers say it's perfectly safe, but it looks perfectly dangerous. Brilliant! <laughs> Yeah, frightening. No, do it again. Oh, talk about adrenaline. That is incredible. And at £35 a go, a bungee jump could be the perfect Christmas gift for the man who has everything and doesn't mind losing it. Fundraisers have been testing out their stamina on a special assault course to raise money for a children's charity. The teams, all from local companies, were raising funds for Peggy Wood's Leukaemia Trust at Maidstone's Invicta Barracks. Cash from the event will go towards the running cost of a special ambulance to take sick children up to London for treatment. That's all for tonight. We're back with more news for the South East at 9.55 in the morning. In the meantime, a very good night from me. Good evening. Well, by noon tomorrow, we should see a region of high pressure starting to develop in the southwest approaches, which will bring along much more settled weather in the longer term. But uh, down the eastern side of the country, air coming in off the North Sea will be very chilly, of course, and there's likely to be some residual fog around uh, in the Midlands. There will be fog and frost developing tonight as air temperatures drop to about 3 Celsius, so take care if you're travelling in the morning. Tomorrow, the winds will pick up over the east side of Kent, coming in off the North Sea. It'll feel quite chilly there in the wind. The best temperatures in sheltered areas on the south coast, and there may be some spots of rain coming down across Thanet, settling down as the high builds later in the week. Good night. Here's the summary.